Hey y'all, if we haven't already met, hi, I'm Stacy. I'm a paramedic instructor, and today's Monday, and you know what that means, it's Medication Monday. And if you can't already tell by the picture behind me, we are going to be talking about the medication glucagon. So glucagon is most commonly referred to as the generic name glucagon, but you may also hear it referred to as its brand name, which is glucagon. And it falls under the drug class hormones because it's specifically a pancreatic hormone. So how does this medication work in the body, or what's the mechanism of action? Glucagon actually stimulates glycogenolysis, and what the heck does that mean? So that's a fancy way of saying that glucagon causes the breakdown of glycogen in the body. And by doing this, it increases the blood sugar. It also promotes smooth muscle relaxation, and it is also said to have positive chronotropic and inotropic effects. So let's talk about why we would actually administer glucagon to a patient. The most common indication for administering glucagon to a patient is hypoglycemia. And this is specifically when we are unable to administer a sugar product. So say our patient is unable to take oral glucose so they can't protect their own airway and we are unable to start an IV line in order to administer D10 or D50 or whatever kind of sugar product. Another reason why we may administer glucagon is if our patient is experiencing a calcium channel blocker overdose or a beta blocker overdose. Unfortunately, we don't typically have the amount of glucagon that would be needed to serve as an antidote for these types of overdoses, but it is an option more in the hospital setting. And another reason why we would administer glucagon is to anaphylaxis patients but specifically patients that are unable to receive epinephrine. Let's say they have advanced coronary artery disease and they've been advised by their doctor to not have epinephrine or adrenaline under any circumstances. You could administer glucagon in these situations or in a patient that maybe is on beta blockers and the epinephrine that's been administered has been antagonized, we can also consider glucagon IV in these situations. And the last reason why we may administer glucagon out in the EMS field is for what they refer to as steakhouse syndrome or an esophageal obstruction. So let's say our patient was chowing down on steak or honestly any type of food and they have some piece of the food lodged in their esophagus. Typically, these patients present with drooling, feel like they need to cough out the obstruction, but they're unable to. It's very uncomfortable for the patient, and this would be a perfect situation to give our patients glucagon because it just relaxes that esophagus and allows that obstruction, or we hope it allows that obstruction to pass through. A contraindication of this medication is going to be hyperglycemia or high blood sugar. And before we get into dosages, make sure you abide by your local protocol, stay within your scope of practice. The typical hypoglycemia dose for glucagon is one milligram. So in this picture, there's one milligram in the vial and that's usually how it goes. The patient would be receiving the entire vial and they would be receiving it intramuscularly or a shot into their muscle. Now, when we're talking anaphylaxis, the range that my area gives me is one to two milligrams IV, but I've heard from people that have much more advanced scopes and better protocols than myself. They say that the amount of glucagon that you would need in these situations is very large, just like the overdose dosages, which unlikely you're going to have it on the ambulance. And for steakhouse syndrome, it's typically one milligram IV. And the dose range that you're going to be looking at for the beta blocker or calcium channel blocker overdoses is going to be anywhere between 5 to 10 milligrams. So like I said, a massive amount. And the pediatric dose is going to be 0.1 milligrams per kilogram. Adverse reactions of glucagon could be tachycardia, nausea and vomiting, and also rebound hypoglycemia. And a side note about glucagon. Yes, our patient is going to need supplemental glucose. So this could be in the form of you just telling the nurses, hey, I administered a milligram of glucagon. Um, they're awake and alert now. Can you make sure they eat before they go home? Or if they're still unconscious, hey, be advised, I have administered glucagon. If you can try to get an IV and give some dextrose and get that on board. But don't be like me and be so afraid to administer glucagon because when I was in advanced EMT class, they made it seem like if we gave this medication and did not give supplemental glucose within half an hour, 
we were going to end up working a cardiac arrest on these patients. And this is simply untrue. And it took me working with an experienced clinician to tell me, hey, what you were taught is false. So don't be afraid to administer glucagon when it is indicated. Because honestly, guys, it is kind of a jack of all trades. Um, It's also a very expensive drug, but it is very, very useful when it's needed. 